Hello there, Highworth Community Church. In response to Matt's request for a contribution with the title, My Challenge to You, I thought I would share something that is actually a current challenge to me. Many of you may already have this one sorted. If so, please do share your experiential wisdom. Firstly, I'd like to read you a short text. It's not from the Bible. It does echo some scriptural references, which I'll mention later. Um, and it is rather archaic language, but bear with me, it's written by George Herbert sometime in the 17th century. It's a poem. Love bade me welcome, yet my soul drew back, guilty of dust and sin. But quick-eyed love, observing me grow slack from my first entrance in, drew nearer to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful, oh my dear, I, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I have marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. Know you not, says love, who bore the blame? My dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So I did sit and eat. The opening phrase of this poem came to mind uh, in one of my times with God recently. I didn't remember the rest of the poem. In fact, I wasn't even sure where it was from. Do you ever find that in your dialogues with any given member of the Trinity, it can get either stunningly simple or just a bit convoluted. This was more like the second. I had to Google the phrase and then I didn't get around to doing that straight away. Completely forgot about it. Some days later remembered and then the outcome? Well, it was one of those moments where the Holy Spirit sneaks under your defences and leaves you defenceless. I realised that some of my prayer encounters recently have had a similar theme. And as I reflected on this, I realised that this is more of a recurrent challenge than a current one. The challenge of love. The poem reminds me of the parable of the wedding feast, uh, which is in Matthew 22 and Luke 14. And of the situation where Jesus decides to wash the disciples' feet. I think that's in John 13. And a couple of questions come to mind when I think about these stories. An invitation from the king? What's my response? An act of service by the king? What's my response? If you remember Peter's response to the idea of Jesus, his master and lord, wanting to wash his filthy feet, was, no, never. And then Jesus had to explain a little bit. And Peter went from one extreme to the other and he said, well, in that case, wash all of me, not only my feet. And then Jesus had to explain a little bit more. Why is it so difficult to accept the invitation from the King of Kings to come and sit with him at the feast? Why is it so difficult to let my feet be washed by Jesus? I responded to Jesus' invite to follow him many, many years ago. And I still find myself undone when he reminds me of the measure of his immeasurable love for me. Like the person in the poem, I become acutely aware of my dust and my sin. Surely, I don't deserve to be at the feast yet. And like the person in the poem, I feel like, well, if I am at the feast, then I should be the one doing the serving not Jesus, because he's the king. He should be sitting at the head of the table and me waiting on him. This pattern of thoughts is a bit stinking thinking. Can you hear that in an American accent? Because that's how I heard it. Stinking thinking. <sighs> but at least now I recognise the pattern and the bondage of this stinking thinking. I realise that the challenge of love calls for complete surrender which requires a response of faith. John 6, 29 says, This 
is the only work that God wants from you. The only work that God wants from you is to believe in the one that he has sent. It's funny, isn't it? Um, the Holy Spirit has a way of underlining things, but I came across a quote from John Piper in the middle of all of this, which said, religious flesh always wants to work for God rather than humbling itself to realise that God must work for it in free grace. He references Romans 8.13 where it says, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. The need to do something to contribute to my righteousness or to justify getting an invite when I feel guilty or ashamed or unworthy or not good enough or etc, etc, etc. It's a thinking that smells of pride, which is not a fragrant aroma. Isaiah 64 verse 4 says, From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides thee who works for those who wait for him. This is the greatness of our God. He works for those who wait for him the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness to us in Christ Jesus. He came to serve, not to be served. The God of all creation came to serve, not to be served. Our fitting response is to get in line with his mission and then he gets all the glory. So the challenge of love, it's to say yes and to keep saying yes. And as in the poem, to sit down and eat at the invitation of the King and King, King of Kings, wherever and whenever he lays out a banqueting table. So can I encourage you to take up the challenge of love in this season? Thanks for listening. Missing you all. Bye.